Lesson 12.3 takes us to permutations and combinations. We're still going to be talking probability. And in fact, our final goal of the lesson is that we will talk about how to do probability using permutations and combinations. Right now, we've just got to work our way into what are permutations and combinations. So as we start thinking about this, we can look at this one to get us going. Holly, Tia, and Kenji. Holly, Tia, Kenji, and Nate are eligible to be officers of the Honor Society. Two of the four students will be chosen at random as president and vice president. Table summarizes the possible outcomes. So, first question. Holly wants to be an officer with her best friend, Tia. How many outcomes make up this event? Nothing too difficult here. Two. Two? Okay. You guys see two? There should be what? HT and TH. So there are two outcomes. That make up that event. Now, B is the follow up to that question. How many outcomes show Holly as president and Tia as vice president? One. Just one. Which one? The second one in the top row. Okay. Second one, top row. In other words, the one where it is HT, right? So, and I didn't mention it up here, but this HT represents what? Holly as president and Tia as vice president based on how our chart is set up, right? And so that means TH would have represented T as president and Holly as VP. So there's only one that shows Holly as president and T as vice president, and that was HT. Now, as we are looking through this one, okay, one of the big things that this is getting us to think about is does the order matter on this chart of how the names are listed? And it does, right? Because otherwise, HT and TH would be the same, wouldn't they? But they're not. They mean two different things because in this case, we are, you know, they are specific officer positions assigned president and vice president. So it matters who is assigned first or who is assigned which, okay? One of the big things we're going to talk about with permutations and combinations is does order matter, okay? When you're assigning to specific officers, office positions, order is going to matter. Okay. And how many outcomes have only one of them as an officer? Which one is it? Eight. I think eight sounds right if I recall. Well, if it's only one of them as an officer, we're looking at HK, HN, TK, TN, KH, KT, NH, and NT. In other words, we're looking for combinations that have either H or T, right? So, should be a total of eight. And if I write those out real quick, what I have? KH, KT, NH, NT, and then... HK, HN, TK, and TN. Okay, so just the difference that part of the exploration here is whether or not order matters and being able to tell that because eventually that will be one of our things we'll have to talk about is does order matter? Okay. The fundamental counting principle. I am guessing you talked about this back in, I don't know, middle school, if not algebra one. You've talked about it someplace. You don't necessarily know it by name, but you like it when you get to use it because it makes life a lot easier. So um, let's look at this example with it. Um, Manuel wants to advertise the number of one-topping pizzas he offers to his customers. 
How many different one topping pizzas are available at Manuel's Pizzeria? Notice at his pizzeria you get to choose a size. Do you want a large pizza or a medium pizza? Then you get to choose your crust. Do you want deep dish or thin? And then you have to choose a topping because these are just one topping pizzas, right? So sausage, pepperoni, or cheese. Thoughts here? I could be. I could look for a number. I can look for how we do it. We can, you know. Twelve. Twelve? Why? Because um, if, if you're just counting it, then you do large to deep dish to sausage. Or you could do okay. every large deep dish has three options. Okay. And then every medium deep dish has three options. And then you okay. Can so looking at the different kind of options that we can pair up together. Okay. And... It's the only time I'm going to do this today, okay? Along that line, so I'm going to set up a tree diagram, okay? I know, I saw some rolls of eyes there, okay? Tree diagrams, I know, not our favorites, and we're not going to really use it. But I want to kind of demonstrate that 12 and make sure you see where it's coming from before we get to the shortcut. Because I'm going to even use more of a shortcut than what Autumn was doing there, where she was just kind of going through it. I'm going to even use more of a shortcut there. So just if we kind of go back... To the basics and if I think about a tree diagram the first choice I'm picking is do I want a medium or a large pizza right I guess it was large or medium on this order but I picked medium or large if I pick a medium pizza then what's my next choice do I want deep dish or do I want thin I'm using DD and TH what about if I want large pizza what's my choice do I want deep dish, DD, or do I want thin? Okay. After you pick your crust, what's the next thing you pick? You pick your topping, right? So if I picked, and this is how Autumn was kind of talking about, a medium deep dish pizza, now I get to pick, do I want sausage, pepperoni, or cheese? If I picked a medium thin crust pizza, then I get to pick sausage, pepperoni, or cheese. On the other side, if I picked a large deep dish pizza, again, I could have sausage, pepperoni, or cheese. Or if I had a large thin crust, I could have sausage, pepperoni, or cheese. Then that's just going through our different combinations where we picked the size of our pizza first, then we picked the type of crust we wanted, and then we picked our topping. How do I get my answer just by looking at the tree diagram? Yeah, go down to the bottom and count up how many pieces we have here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Yes? Okay, now, so I agree with the answer 12. Tree diagram demonstrates it. Funny little counting principle, my opinion, makes it a little bit even quicker. How many size choices did we have? How many crust choices did we have? How many topping choices did I have? What do I do with 2, 2, and 3? We multiply them. What is 2 times 2 times 3? And that is 12. So there are 12 different pizzas I could, I could pick from, or I could order, based on what size I pick, the crust I pick, and the topping I pick. Okay? Now, good news, I don't think there's a single tree diagram in homework. If there is, I don't, you know, I know you don't have to make any. So I don't think you even have to read any, but always a good thing to review for when they pop up sometime. Okay, this is our fundamental counting principle that we just used. If there are M ways to make the first decision and N ways to make the second selection, then there are M times N ways to make the two selections. If there's a third selection with P choices, added, then there are M times N times P ways to make the, all three selections. 
and so on and so forth. Okay, in other words, there's not a limit to how many, you know, pieces we can combine here. But the idea is the short way would have just been to say, oh, two sizes times two crust type times three toppings equals 12. Okay. Questions there? Okay. Let's uh, look at the um, carbine example here. The car that Ms. Garcia is buying comes with a choice of three trim lines, standard, sport, or luxury, two types of transmission, automatic or manual, and eight color choices. How many different option packages does Ms. Garcia have to choose from? We can make a tree diagram, but that sounds like a lot of extra work that I don't want to do. So let's go the easy route. What do you see? Three times two times eight. Because the first thing that Ms. Garcia has to pick is, whoops, the trim line, yes. And how many trim line choices did she have? That was three. Then after that, she's picking what type of transmission she wants in her as her option. How many transmission options are there? Two. And then she has to pick the color. And she had eight color options. Three times two times eight is? 48. I'm going with 48. Okay. And that is 48 different, what was it, um, option packages. So 48 different packages she can choose from there. By having eight colors, it really adds up a lot, doesn't it? Okay, that is your fundamental accounting principle. We're going to use that a lot just within what we do. You won't even necessarily realize we're using it sometimes, but that is a quick, easy way to find out total number of options of something. Okay. And that takes us to permutations. Permutation, and we're going to talk about permutation combinations. Permutations is an arrangement of objects in a specific order. Okay, when you hear me talk about permutations versus combinations, the big difference is does order matter? And with a permutation, you will always hear me say that order matters. Okay. Like the example at the beginning of the lesson about Holly and Tia and president and vice president. Order matters, right? Especially if it mattered to Holly whether she was president or vice president. Order matters there, okay? Now, when we do permutations, I'm going to show you several ways we can do permutations today. Some of it will be kind of like what we were doing with the fundamental accounting principle where you're just multiplying numbers together. And we'll talk about like setting up blanks and stuff. But there is also a formula that we're going to talk about. And we will talk about how to do this formula by hand. And eventually I'll also demonstrate how to do this formula on the calculator. There are, I don't know, there's importance both ways in my opinion. So I'm not going to just jump to the calculator because I do want to talk about it by hand. But what this is, P standing for permutation here, this is the permutation of Okay, how do they say? They say the number of permutations of R objects taken from a set of N objects. I think when I usually read this, I say the permutation of N objects picked R at a time. So you're picking from so many N objects and you're picking them R at a time. Okay, your setup is N, and what I'm going to say factorial, over N minus R factorial. Now notice that's what you guys would call an exclamation mark, right? But in math, it's not an exclamation mark. It's what we call factorial. Are you guys familiar with the factorial? Okay. I was thinking maybe you'd seen it along, somewhere along the line, but maybe not. So my next definition here, the factorial of a positive integer n is the product of all positive integers less than or equal to n. It is written as n with an explanation, explanation point, 
and is read as in factorial. And then extra information here, by definition, 0 factorial equals 1. For example, let's make this make sense. If I say 5 factorial, so 5 with an exclamation point, that's not just an excited, happy 5. I can say 5. It is what? 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. So 5 factorial is starting at the number 5 and multiplying all the way down to 1. And then that has a value, yes? Is it 120? Yeah. Is that what it multiplies to be? I'll see after you get to using some of these, they'll kind of be stuck in your head. Because I'll be honest, I did not multiply that there right there. It's just one of those that we use a lot. Okay, so this is what a factorial is. If I say 10 factorial, that means I'm going to do 10 times 9 times 8 times 7 times 6 times 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1, right? So that is your exclamation point in math. And we're going to use that today. Okay, so permutation, an arrangement of objects in a specific order. Order matters. As we look at some examples where we practice this, Gabrielle is making a playlist with her three favorite songs. How many possible orders are there for the songs? Now, in this case, are we indicating order matters? And this is where I, I'm going to give you a hint, guys. We're in the permutation part of the lesson, so guess what? Order does matter. And here's the deal. We're making a playlist with our three favorite songs. So the idea here is the songs are already picked. The idea is what's going to go first, second, third. And obviously this must matter, matter to Gabrielle. Okay? So if I, let's see, we're going to, If I call the songs, songs A, B, and C, okay, what orders do we have? And we'll start with the obvious. One order could be A, B, C. What's another order? A, C, B. What's another order? B, C, A. B A C C B A C A B Did he get them all? Okay. Just doing that by hand, how many orders are there then? There are six. So there are six ways that Gabriella can take her three favorite songs and make a list. In other words, there's six different ways she can order those. Okay? If it would be just one of those things where, okay, she has so many songs, she's just picking so many songs, then order might not matter. But in this case, she's making a playlist, and it does, it asks the question, how many possible orders are there? Then that's one way to think about it. Now, I don't even think I'm going to use the formula on this one. Here's my other thought. She's picking how many songs? Arranging how many songs? Three songs, yes. This is where the fundamental counting principle comes in. So, first song. How many choices to put in position of the first song? Three. She puts a song in that first position. Now, how many choices to put in the second position? She put one in the first position, right? So one of them is used. So that means there's now two left to go in the second position. How many songs left to go in the third position? One. Just one. Well, take a guess. What do we do here? Three times two times one is six. And then, so there are six different orders she can put those songs in. And we already demonstrated that by just doing the list by hand. And you're not going to have to be doing list by hand. Okay. With permutations, and on the next one I'll also throw in the formula up there, but with permutations, depending, as long as it's not too complicated of a problem, you don't necessarily have to use the formula. 
You can use this idea right here of just kind of setting up the blanks. How many blanks do I need? How many choices? Or we can talk for more. Okay. Gabriella wants to make another playlist, this time using five of the eight songs from her favorite artist's latest album. How many playlists are possible? Now, I am not writing them out by hand this time. A few too many that I don't want to write out here. Okay. Let's start with the idea of filling in blanks. How many songs is she picking? Five. So how many blanks do I need? Five. Okay. So first song, second song, third song, fourth song, and fifth song. Because she's picking five. She's picking five total songs. So it says first, second, third, fourth, fifth. How many choices to go in the position of first song? Eight, because it says she is picking from eight songs, yes? Puts a song in the position. How many choices for second position? Now she has seven to pick from. How many songs to go in options to go in the third position? Six, fourth position, five, and fifth position, four. How many possible playlists does this make? There's a reason I didn't want to write these by hand, folks. So by picking five out of eight songs, there are 6,720 different ways she could create and order a playlist there. Okay. That's by setting it up with blanks. Now, there are times where I think the formula is important. And so I want to set up the formula up here. Okay. And this will also lead us so we can talk about how to use the calculator here in a little bit. But NPR. Okay. So that is the permutation of N objects chosen R at a time. What are my numbers going to be? The permutation of how many am I picking from? Eight, and we're picking or selecting how many? Five. So when I write this a permutation for this scenario, it's a permutation of eight objects picked five at a time. Now, look at the formula up there. On top, it says n factorial. Well, which one's n? That's your first one, right? So it's going to be eight factorial over... On the bottom, it says n minus r factorial. n minus r is going to be 8 minus 5 factorial. So let's see. 8 factorial is 8 factorial. What's 8 minus 5? 3 factorial. Now, a fun little thing. Yes, you can start multiplying these out on your calculator, but there's also some canceling that can happen here. So what does 8 factorial mean again? Bless you. 8 times 7 times 6 times 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. Yes? What does 3 factorial mean? 3 times 2 times 1. What do you notice on top and bottom? Yeah. 3, 2, 1, 3, 2, 1. They can cancel top and bottom. Um, do those numbers on top look familiar? They do. Okay, the 8, 7, 6, 5, 4. And so what do we already know those multiply out to be? 6,720. Now, I know you're saying anything, okay, Ms. Sergeant, that was the really longer way. I understand that. But if you, you know, you very well may end up being a person that you just want to stick to the formula so you don't have to think about anything else. I want you to see how you use the formula. Okay. Questions there? Okay.
you started thinking about C. How many possibility are there for Gabriella's playlist if she uses her four favorite songs? Well, do you want to think about it with just blanks? What is it with just blanks? How many songs is she picking? Four, so that means I have, I can't count, excuse me, four blanks. And not that you have to label, but first, second, third, fourth. How many choices for the first song? Four. How many choices for the next song? Three. Next. Two. One. What is four times three times two times one? Twenty-four. So in this case, she has twenty-four different playlists. How do we set this up as a permutation? It's a permutation of how many things chosen how many at a time? How many things are she cho is she choosing from? Four. She's choosing from four songs. How many is she picking? Four, because it's all about ordering them here, isn't it? And there's a reason I want to show you how this one works out. Okay. On top, it's n factorial, the first number, which is going to be 4 factorial. On bottom, n minus r factorial. So the two numbers subtracted, which what is 4 minus 4 factorial? So I'm going to have 4 factorial over, officially, 0 factorial, right? 4 factorial is... 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. What's 0 factorial? By definition, it's 1. Okay? That's one of those you have to know, or I'll show you how you can do a factorial on your calculators here in a moment, or uh, in a little bit, but it's using, just know that fact. And 4 times 3 times 2 times 1, then divide by 1 is going to be the 24 we talked about. When it comes to homework, guys, it's going to be a personal choice as to how you do each problem. Okay? You may want the formula. You may not want the formula. It's not a wrong or a right way to do it. They both work in depending on the situation. Okay. One more in this section. How many possibilities are there for Gabrielle's playlist if she uses five of the ten most popular songs? So what am I setting up in terms of if I'm going to set up with blanks and not the formula? Five. She's picking five, so five blanks. First, second, third, fourth, and fifth. How many choices for that first song in her playlist? Time she's picking from the 10 most popular songs, so 10. She puts a song in that first spot. How many choices left for the second spot? Nine. Nine. She puts one in the second spot. Then we have what? Eight. Then seven. Then six. Ten times nine times eight times seven times six is some big number. As I said, some big number, right? 30,240 playlist options there. And again, I want to try the permutation here. Permutation of what? How many objects picked how many at a time? Okay. Permutation of 10 objects 
picked five at a time. Here's a little secret, guys. Bigger numbers are always going to be on the left. Okay? I don't... It's not possible to have a permutation with the bigger number on the right. So just an FYI. Okay? So, and then on top, if you're going... If you're all about the shortcuts, on top it's going to be the left number, the bigger number, right? So 10 factorial. The denominator is going to be... the two numbers subtracted. So I'm going to end up doing 10 factorial divided by 5 factorial. You can multiply those out in your calculator and divide them as is. Or you can think about some canceling, yes? Okay. 10 factorial is 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. 5 factorial, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. And what I love working about factorials now. Yeah, half of this jazz cancels, and I don't have to worry about it. So 5 through 1 cancels. So whatever 10 times 9 times 8 times 7 times 6 is, which should be what we already did over there. Okay, so 30,240 playlists there. Let's go ahead and look at the triangle problem. And then I'll take a moment and give you guys, and we'll look at the calculators and see what you can figure out in your calculators. Okay. You guys have what you need from this screen? Have you started thinking about the triangle problem? If you've been following along, it's doable like all these others. In geometry, polygons are labeled by placing letters at their vertices. How many ways are there to label a triangle with letters of the alphabet? So, a triangle needs how many labels? Three. So, I'm thinking first vertex, second vertex, third vertex. So, we have three spots to fill. Thoughts on what we're filling them with? Big information you have to know here is you have to go back to like preschool, kindergarten, how many letters are in the alphabet, right? Or there you go, start counting them on your fingers, yes? Okay, so there are 26 letters in the alphabet. So 26 options in the first. Then you label, we're not going to reuse it, are we? Okay, we use three different things. So now we have 25 choices and then we have 24 choices. And what did you guys say that was? 15,600 different ways to name a triangle. Okay. Now, this is where if I'm using the formula, I don't write out all the pieces. I do a lot of canceling in my head because I'm not going to write out 26 all the way down. Okay. But how's the permutation here? Right? Permutation is choosing from... How many spots or how many items? 26 items to fill three spots. On top we put 26 factorial. On bottom we put, subtract the two, 26 minus 3 factorial. So I have 26 factorial over 23 factorial. I will say on your calculator, even when I show you how to do a factorial here in a moment, sometimes those are even too big. Your calculator might not let you even do 26 factorial, which means we do have to do some canceling, right? Well, I'm not going to write this all out, but I'm going to write myself enough that I can see what I'm doing. 26 times 25 times 24 times 23 times 22, so on and so forth, right? All the way down to 1 if you want. What's 23 factorial mean? 23 times 22, all the way down to 1. What do you see that can happen? 
Yeah. 23 through 1 cancel. I don't have to necessarily write that all out to realize that they cancel there if I'm trying to show my work. Okay, so same thing. Of course, you end up with the 15,600. Okay. Have your calculator handy? Have you tried to figure out where to do this on your calculator? You are looking for your probability button. On my calculator, it says PRB. Your calculator is not my calculator. It will be something else. But you're looking for your probability menu. Okay, so for me, PRB right there, yes? If I hit my PRB button, notice what it brings up. NPR, NCR, and an exclamation point, yes? I can use those to find out the pieces I need to find out. For instance, what did we just do? Permutation of 26 objects, three at a time. Now, I have to back out because on my calculator I have to enter the 26 before I go in. So I enter my first number, 26. Then I go into my probability menu. I pick NPR. What was I doing? Three? Probability of 26. Pick from 26 items, three at a time. And I get that answer we just came up with. Okay? It's in there somewhere. Graphing calculator, it's in your math menu, I think. And there's some other shortcuts. Casios, I don't know if you guys have a probability menu. Mm -hmm. Mine is x to the negative first, but you have to press shift to get to x exclamation point. Okay. Do you have, have you found your permuta permutation combination? Where would it be? Oh, yeah. It's oh. the multiplication and division. Okay. I say on this particular Casio that I had in my drawer, there is an NCR button, and right above it is an NPR. So, I don't know. Any scientific calculator is going to be able to do this. It's just a matter of finding the where. So, something to play around with there. This one have. Yeah, I'm not seeing it as easy on this one, but I know it's there somewhere. Yeah, I see. This one's probably more like yours. I see the exclamation point. Did you find where it is, did you say? For one? Yeah. Uh, yeah, so it's x to the negative first, but you have to shift to get to the exclamation point. And then the multi above the multiplication and division, it says when you are uh, Yep, that's where it is on this one, too. Okay. It's in a very light yellow that's hard to see. Yeah. At least on this one. Okay. Where am I at on time? Okay, let's, we can go ahead and start talking about combinations a little bit. It'll just give us less to do tomorrow. Okay. What's the difference with combinations? Combination is a set of objects with no specific order. What I always tend to say here is, guess what I'm going to write here, order does not matter. Okay, with a combination, order does not matter. That first example earlier we did when it was Holly and Tia and Kenji and whoever the other person was, it was president versus vice president, order mattered there because they weren't just being named officers, they were being named specifically president versus vice president. Okay, an example like that where order doesn't matter is, okay, we're going to assign four officers. They're not named specific positions, they're just officers, okay? That's an example where order does not matter. Now, notice you have a slightly new formula, okay? It is very similar to what we've done, 
it's n factorial still over n minus r factorial except there is an extra r factorial thrown out of the front okay this is the number of object of r objects taken from a set of n objects or i again will say n objects chosen r at a time so let's look at this first example i think we can get through it marisol is planning to be a counselor at a, at a summer camp she can choose three activities for her session how many different combinations of three activities are possible? Well, let's start with how many activities are there to choose from. I do think that's right. You guys counting 10? Okay. So she can choose three activities for a session. How many different, and this one even specifically ask, how many different combination of three activities are possible? Does the order matter when she picks these? Does it matter if she picks climbing, then cooking, then fishing, or fishing, then climbing, then cooking? No, it's just which three is she picking. So this is a combination. Now, if we use our formula, what's our formula looking like? The combination of 10 items picked three at a time. Okay, and so when you set this up, follow your formula. Still the bigger number on top, 10 factorial. You're still going to subtract the two smaller numbers, 10 minus 3 factorial on bottom. But then you also, that r factorial, is the smaller number out front. You will figure out real quick with a little bit of cleanup, 10 factorial over 3 factorial times 7 factorial. Those bottom two numbers will always add up to be that numerator. And remind me, and we will do the math behind that tomorrow. I shouldn't have done that one. I didn't really have time. I thought I did. So remind me, we'll do the math behind that tomorrow. Get caught up on old homework if you haven't lately.